who is right and who is wrong in the Tyler O'Neill play at the plate controversy. Plus, on top of that, we've got the Cardinals getting swept by the Braves. We'll discuss all of it today on Locked on Cardinals. You are locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. Plus, you can find us on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment. That way you can interact with us. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So we got a couple games to, to talk about here. We've got Tuesday's loss, and we've got today's loss. Uh, Tuesday night, the Braves beat the Cardinals by the score of 4-1. to one. It was a, a tight game where every run mattered, and for most of it, the Cardinals didn't do anything offensively against a rookie left-hander, Dylan Dodd, who went to SEMO, by the way, pointed that out in our last episode. Got to love it when the alma mater gets some love. Uh, the team notoriously, notoriously falls uh, short and fails against rookies. And um, they made Dodd look like the next coming of Tom Glavin out there in an Atlanta Braves uniform, uh, moving the ball in and out, up and down. He was changing speeds. Um, maybe not as good as Glavin, but you know who he did remind me of, and I tweeted this out, was Wade Miley, Wade Miley, who uh, has had a very good career. The Cardinals have seen plenty of him over the years with Arizona, Cincinnati, uh, Chicago. He's with Milwaukee now. But a lot of similarities there where they, they get the ball quick, they keep it moving, and they keep the game going. Like, it's just they, they, they don't mind you putting the ball in play, although the Cardinals were swinging and missing a lot against him. But as much as the headline about Tuesday night's game should have been how the Cardinals fell behind early again, and the lack of offense against a rookie, uh, what people are really talking about is the play that ended the Cardinals rally in the seventh inning. Going to paint the picture for you. Some of you may not have seen this play, and I wish I was a, I had the capability on our YouTube channel. I wish I could replay video for you, but uh, MLB rules won't allow me to do such things, so I'll just have to paint the picture for you. So Close your eyes. The Cardinals have runners at first and second with two outs, and Brendan Donovan is at the play. Picture his flowing hair. Uh, your runner on second base is the ultra-fast Tyler O'Neill and all his muscles. It's a 4-1 to one ball game, so that run, although important to the Cardinals, isn't a be-all, end-all type of run. It's not going to tie the game. It's not going to give the Cardinals the lead. So it's, it's yeah, sure, it's important, but it's not like this massive run that, like, oh, my gosh, can't let this guy score. Donovan. Rips the third pitch that he sees in a right field where brave superstar outfielder Ronald Acuna Jr. is playing and waiting. Uh, it is well known that Acuna has one of the best and most accurate arms in all of Major League Baseball. So most teams don't really run on him. The ball was hit sharply. Exit velo, 99.5. It was a one hopper, boom, right to him. Okay, he didn't have to run off to his right or to his left or anything. Right to him. O'Neal takes off on contact. And we've all seen Tyler run before. The dude is lightning fast. One of the fastest runners in all of Major League Baseball. But he's heading towards third base. And you never, it never appears that he gets up to full speed. Okay? He never seems to get there. Um, and despite that, and I'm not talking just to anybody's normal speed, like O'Neal full speed, because we all know how fast he is. And despite that, and despite the ball going right to Ronald Acuna Jr., one of the best outfielders, their base coach, Pop Warner, sends O'Neal home. He's going to be aggressive. O'Neal never slows down, but again, he never seems to kick it into that next gear either that we've seen Tyler get to many, many times before. 
and he gets thrown at at home plate by a lot, by a couple of feet. Like, it's not even close. It ends the inning. My first thought seeing this play was O'Neal didn't think he was going to be sent home due to, first, how hard the ball was hit, and second, because he knew who was in right field. He knew who had the arm out there in right field, so I don't think he thought, that's my first thought, I don't think he thought he was going to be sent home. I didn't think, well, I didn't think Warner was going to send him, to be honest, after the ball was hit either. I thought he was going to have him rounded hard and then hold him up. But I have to agree with Ali Marmel on this one. Uh, as a ball player, you are taught that you run as hard as possible to your fullest, and you let your third base or first base coach decide whether or not you're going to the next place. You're not supposed to have it already in your mind that something else is going to happen. You watch your third base coach, and if he's swinging his arm going, go, go, you should be at top speed already coming around third. My second thought was that Tyler didn't look to be running as fast as his usual self. I was wondering if he was dealing with some sort of leg injury that we didn't know about. And that's why he wouldn't allow himself to go full throttle on the play. Remember last year, Tyler O'Neill, multiple injuries to his legs. Just a disaster of a season because of that. So maybe he's taking a little extra caution there because he doesn't want to push it. Maybe he's nervous still. It had rained last night. Maybe he's trying to avoid risking injury again. Apparently, Ali also noticed that, you know, he wasn't up to what normal Tyler O'Neill's speed is and asked Tyler after the play if he was hurt. O'Neill said no. So that made Ali feel like he should be criticizing him about O'Neill's effort. Well, if you're not hurt, why aren't you running hard? Is probably what he said. Uh, after the game, here's what Ali said to the media. We've got a lot of guys playing really hard, and that's not our style of play as far as the effort rounding the bag there. It's unacceptable. O'Neill said this after the game about the play and about Ali's comment. I think Ali was pretty blunt about it, and he didn't think I gave the best effort. I'm out here every day grinding my behind off and giving it my all and trying to stay on the field for 162 games. Like I've said, I, I've got to get a better jump next time and get around the base a little quicker and be in there safe next time. He also went on to say, I've never been known to be a dogger in any caliber. For Marmel to say that I didn't hustle, that's very strong words. Now, just from the eye test and watching this team day in and day out and loving Tyler O'Neill as a player. He's one of my favorite guys on the team. I, I just think he's such a great athlete. He's, he's fun to watch. It did not appear to me that Tyler O'Neill was running at his full speed, which is elite level speed, top 10 in the league type of speed. And StatCast backs this up. He hit a top sprint speed of 28 feet per second. 30 feet per second is considered elite by MLB standards, which we all know that O'Neill is capable of on a daily basis. So whatever the reasoning behind it, trying not to get hurt, didn't think he was going to be sent, or didn't think Acuna would throw the ball home, because that's another thing that, I, that we didn't mention. That's another possibility, considering the score of the game. Maybe he thought he would be able to coast home, and that Acuna was going to throw the ball into second base that he wouldn't risk launching the ball, you know, over the catcher or something and have the guy, the runners move up into scoring position again and then, you know, really cause the Braves some problems. I personally do not think that Tyler O'Neill gave his full effort there. I don't think that's Tyler O'Neill running as hard as he can. On the other hand, and this is not me bashing Tyler O'Neill only, there's plenty of things that went wrong here. On the other hand, I don't think there's any reason for Ali to have said the things that he said to the media afterwards about this. According to reports, Ali and Tyler met up about things on Tuesday night. But personally, I think this could have all been avoided by just having a private discussion about effort and hustle in the clubhouse instead of calling him out in front of all of the media like that. If he was going to field a question about that particular play, and perhaps one of the questions would go like, did you think O'Neal was running his fastest or hardest around the bag on that play where he got thrown at at home? Ollie could have said, 
that's something that me and Tyler are going to talk about. We'll, we'll have a private discussion about it. And you leave it at that. I mean, we all would have understood what that meant, that you didn't think he ran as hard as he should have been. But it also doesn't put that player on blast and embarrass him. And you can say all the things you want about, well, you don't need to baby these players or whatever, but there's a way to go about it that makes life a little bit easier for everyone involved, isn't there? So you have your chat, perhaps you bench him, which may have happened because O'Neal wasn't in the starting lineup today. And then you move on. That, in my opinion, is the way that you should have handled this situation. Uh, when Ali benched Harrison Bader last year for not hustling, it was, again, he yanked him out of that particular game, didn't like the effort he was getting, pulled him, had a discussion with him in the clubhouse. He was back in the lineup like a day later. Another part of this that I think went wrong is I don't think Pop Warner should have been sending him home there. Even if O'Neal is at full speed and is running the way that Tyler O'Neal has run for most of his career, that we've seen him run. He's probably out anyway. <laughs> and you're down four to one. You don't need to be that aggressive there, especially with Ronald Acuna Jr. out in right field throwing the ball. If it's some average everyday outfielder that doesn't happen to have a cannon and can throw the ball in to home plate at 93 miles per hour, which is what it was clocked at, then all right. <laughs> sure, I, you test him. But some guys you just have to stay a little more cautious against. And in this situation, he got aggressive and it didn't work out for anyone involved. Now, Ali Marmel did not say Pop Warner did anything wrong. He he still says, firmly believes that if O'Neal was running full speed, that that run would have scored. Maybe, but it didn't seem like it. As much as he was out by, I don't think Tyler O'Neal's safe no matter what happens there. So all in all, whole lot of wrong. Whole lot of wrong goes on here by everyone involved, in my opinion. And hopefully it doesn't cause some sort of like manager player rift. I mean, I hope they can be adults and get through this. But Ali continued to be open about the situation today, saying... There's a standard, and it's here. You meet the standard, you play. You don't meet it, you don't play. Again, O'Neal was not in the lineup today, but said that it was a scheduled day off for him. But part of me thinks that even if even if it wasn't scheduled, that Carlson would have been getting the start anyways in center field due to what Ali deemed as a lack of effort. Uh, by the way, in case you didn't see or hear about the game, uh, O'Neal did pinch hit later on, and he... He flew out and I thought it was a funny tweet. I forget which writer put it out there, but he was like, I would have loved to see O'Neill hit a home run and then sprint like super hard around the bases because <laughs> he normally does that. He runs pretty darn hard. Um, I took a poll on this topic and according to the vote last look, 67% of the vote thought it was a combination of O'Neill not running hard, but that he shouldn't have been sent in the first place as well. Uh, one can only hope that these guys can learn from this and are able to move on because Honestly, this team is better with Tyler O'Neill in the lineup. It is. It's a much better team, both offensively and defensively, when Tyler O'Neill is out there and instead of being on the bench. Up next, we're going to talk about today's game where the Cardinals found themselves playing from behind again on Locked On Cardinals. The NBA playoffs are almost here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers? Yo, oh, you're getting the hook up here. No sweat, first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. It's almost like having insurance on your bet. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at bigger payouts with the same game parlay. I know it's not NBA, but my nephew texted me earlier, uh, apparently bet on the Cardinals last night uh, against Dodd and clearly didn't listen to the show that we put out yesterday. Before the bet, because he would have known that the Cardinals don't do very well against rookies. Notoriously bad against rookies the first time they see them. Oops. <laughs> uh, Tommy, you got to watch the show more often. Uh, but you won't make that mistake next time, will you? And you, listener right now, don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to Fandle.com slash locked on. That's Fandle.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with Fandle, an official sports betting partner of the NBA.
Tuesday night, the Cardinals got stumped by the rookie Dylan Dodd, who held the Cardinals to just one run on six hits over five innings and their four to one loss. Then today, they had a chance to make up for it. They had a chance to redeem themselves against another young pitcher, but again, looked lost at the plate. Wasn't good. Cardinals held to just two hits off 23 year old right hander Bryce Elder through six innings and just three hits through the first eight innings. The other disturbing trend that uh, also continued today and has Cardinal Nation worked up is the first inning runs that this pat that pitching staff continues to allow. Miles Michaelis gets the ball for his second start today. And after three hitters, the score is already two to nothing. Just bang in the hole. Uh, the Braves scored three total in that first inning. And again, you've got the team climbing uphill. Just a half inning into the game. The Braves scored in the first inning of all three games of this series, and the Cardinals have allowed a total of nine runs in the first innings of their six games so far this season, which is second only to the Pittsburgh Pirates, who have allowed 10. And the Cardinals were outscored 20-5 to in the first two innings of the six home games against the Blue Jays and the Braves. You guys want to hear another ugly stat? Of course you do. Let's pile on, shall we? Opponents have gone 15-32 for 32 in the first inning against the Cardinals starters and 13 for 29 in the second inning. That is a combined batting average in the first and second inning for your opponent of 459. That's good. That, that'll get you into Cooperstown if you were a, a single hitter. 459 through the first two innings. The Cardinals offense, I know, is is likely to be one of the best in baseball. I know it's good. And they're going to put plenty of runs on the board this year. But wouldn't it be nice to not be losing before you even get a chance to swing the bat for once? That's so bad. That's so bad. All right, let's get uh, into this Miles Michaelis stuff. Allowed four runs in the first two innings on opening day. And uh, again, four runs in the first two innings today. Said this after the game, according to Rob Raines at stlsportspage.com. Not terrible pitches. I hate to blame it on bad luck, but I feel like I'm not catching a whole lot of breaks right now. I think we just need to keep doing what we're doing. We're being aggressive. We're pounding the strike zone early. If we keep doing that over the course of 100 some odd games, I think it's going to shake out. and We're going to have a lot of uh, good starts from all of our starters. I personally am also a believer that this staff is not as bad as it, it has started this regular season. I, I truly believe that. It's the first six games. Um, people are just kind of getting used to things. And it's not like there hasn't been other struggles around Major League Baseball for, for some of the top stars in the game. I mean, what was it? Max Scherzer just got ripped for like three home runs in a row. Um, Corbin Burns from Milwaukee has been lit up in his first two starts. It, 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 the batters usually have the edge coming into the regular season, and that's just a fact. But I also want to point out that uh, the Cardinals staff, as average as we've already said they are, are also going up against, in these first six games, two of the best lineups in Major League Baseball. Yes, they need to be better than they've been. That, that, that's undeniable. But you're also talking about arguably two of the top five offenses in the game right now. Last year, these teams finished number two and number three in OPS, number three and number four in RBIs, number two and number seven in home runs, number three and number four in runs scored, and number one and number nine in batting average. These are not cream puffs who are standing there in the batter's box. These are studs. These are stud lineups. It's why these two teams were picked to be two of the top seven teams to win the World Series this year. I mean, I saw the, the 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 Tampa Bay Rays are now 6-0 and to start the year. Good for them. That's great. But they also played the Tigers and the Nationals. Not exactly murderer's row lineups going on there. And they're going to face the Oakland A's next. So everybody's going to kiss their feet if they go 9-0 and after this. And that's fine. But also realize the level of talent that you're playing. You know, the, the, the teams that the Rays are playing in these first three series, uh, had lost totals of 107, 96, and 102 last year, okay? They're not good. Those are bad teams. On the other side, the Cardinals faced the Blue Jays, who won, what, 92 games? Maybe more than that. Braves won over 100 last year. These are elite teams. These are very good teams. And what do we say coming into the season? The Cardinals aren't really up there with the elite teams yet. They're very, very good, but they're not up there with the elite teams yet. So to lose 
four of six to these guys. Not exactly shocking, is it? It shouldn't be. You don't like to get swept. You would have liked to have taken at least one of three from the Braves, but you took two of three from Toronto. And it really seemed like everything went the Braves' way, didn't it? Like any defensive play, they're diving, and it, it just everything's going in their gloves. It was a tough series, and sometimes that happens, all right? But you can't deny that those are two very, very good teams. So I, I think what I'm saying here, if I'm saying anything all, at all, is that, yes, this Braves series was a bit humbling in ways. Uh, it's clear the Braves are a better team, but it doesn't mean that the Cardinals are straight trash <laughs> and sh they should blow this whole thing up after six games. Like, hey, we're stop. We're not there yet. You can be frustrated, but... If they go into Milwaukee and kick the crap out of the Brewers for the next three games, you're going to feel a lot better about yourself, aren't you? So let's just see how things play out before we start freaking out just yet. Uh, today was a great day, a day that Jordan Walker will never forget. We're going to discuss that next on Locked on Cardinals. If you love baseball and you love video games, then you got to be playing Pro Baseball GM. It combines your dream of being a Major League GM with the fun and enjoyment of a video game. You think the Cardinals need more pitching? Well, you can be the GM and go get them more pitching on this particular game. Uh, at one point or another, you pretended you were in Mo's shoes, taking over the GM role for the Cardinals, but it's not as simple as you may think. You're in charge of a lot of stuff on this game, strategic aspects like uh, hiring the right coaches and staff. You got to manage the finances, scouting, the drafting, free agency, streaks, slumps personalities. You got to worry about that as well. All in a challenging and realistic game world, which is completely free and playable offline, which means you can play as much as you want, wherever you want. Locked on Cardinals listeners, you're getting a 100% free boost to your franchise when you use the promo code locked on in the game store. So make sure to check it out. Download the game by visiting probaseballgm.com. Scan the code that is below right now on YouTube, or you can look it up on the app stores if you want. That's probaseballgm.com, ultimate baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. There was a bright spot in today's loss to Atlanta, and that was rookie outfielder Jordan Walker. Having a day to remember, ripping his first major league home run in the seventh inning, a solo shot off of Michael Tonkin. Put it down the left field line. It traveled 383 feet, had an exit velo of 104.2 off the bat and would have been a home run in every major league ballpark. So it wasn't a cheapie by any means. Uh, the home run also extended Jordan's hitting streak to six games to start his major league career, which is outstanding. And yes, Jordan did get the ball back. In case you're wondering, the guy who actually caught it in left field apparently gave it back without any fuss whatsoever, actually gave it to an usher when he realized it was Jordan's first. And then they were able to, you know, track him down and go, look, we, we can get you something in return for this. So uh, this particular guy did not see his name, but uh, he got a Jordan Walker autograph ball in return. That's all he got, which seems a little bit little. I would have been a little more greedy, I think. I would have asked for an autograph ball, an autograph bat. I would have got some batting gloves. I'd be getting all kinds of Jordan Walker signed memorabilia if I was that guy. But I think it's really, really cool that he realized the importance of it and didn't try to hold it for ransom or want to keep it and then sell it. He was cool about it and gave it back to Jordan. Um, Jordan got to do his curtain call today. You're seeing a picture of it on YouTube right now. And uh, according to reports, Jordan is going to give that ball to his father, Derek, who we've uh, had on the show. Derek, uh, there he is right there on the left on YouTube. Uh, mom in the middle, grandma on the right. Uh, they were at the game again today. And uh, that's just an awesome scene. You know, that that's the, the cool stuff that baseball brings you. Even in a loss, you've got a really neat story right there. So um, Jordan's, gosh, has he looked the part or what so far uh, since coming up and being on the team? Um, you know, he was slumping big time at the end of spring training. But since the regular season has started, he's turned it around and he's looked better each game. Like he's looking more and more comfortable at this level and is uh, looking the part of a future superstar. He's tied for second on the team in hits right now with eight, tied for second on the team in RBIs with five. He's tied for first in doubles with two, third on the team in hitting at 333, and he started every game. I, I thought they were going to give him a day off against Atlanta, but uh, with the O'Neill stuff going on, you know, maybe that kind of ruined that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to just make up stuff there, but Walker started again today and 
Lo and behold, gets the home run, gets the RBI double in the uh, ninth inning. Great start to his career. Absolutely awesome. Thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen. Now your second listen. I want you to check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy baseball knowledge possible. You can find it wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Cardinals have the day off tomorrow as uh, they travel to Milwaukee for the three-game series against the Brewers this week. And so tomorrow's show, uh, we'll dive into a little bit more of the stats and stuff with uh, the Atlanta series. We'll get you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we'll preview uh, what's going to happen in Milwaukee and what the, the the Brewers have been dealing with. As I mentioned, Corbin Burns has not been the Corbin Burns that uh, Milwaukee was hoping for. Cardinals are going to have to face him, but we'll, we'll get into all of that tomorrow. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube to help our channel and our love for the Cardinals grow. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason, and I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.